section to discuss we are going to discuss the neurovascularity of the front of the thigh starting with the humeral artery so this is a diagrammatic view of the artery of the inferior extremity as you can see these artery which are supplying this inferior extremity they they are all are the branches from this femoral artery we will discuss that later also so a femoral artery a femoral artery is a continuation of external iliac artery now this external iliac artery is in this uh, abdominal pelvic portion now from this very portion of the pelvis as it reaches towards the anterior part of the thigh beneath the inguinal ligament so when it enters beneath the inguinal ligament at the very moment this is known as femoral artery so it is a continuation of external iliac artery when it enters behind the inguinal ligament at this mid inguinal point we have already discussed this is the midpoint between the anterior superior iliac spine and pubic symphysis this is where its pulsation can be felt so at this moment this is known as femoral artery even this portion here this at this very portion at mid inguinal point it lies on the sous major tendon which separates the artery from the hip capsule of the hip joint as well as from this uh, portion of the iliopubic ramus and this is a position where we can obviously while pressing it can feel the pulsation and this is the portion where it is lying superficially so here it is suitable for cannulation or arterial catheterization so this is the portion mid inguinal point that in it enters and can be located now from very this moment here it is lying near the base of the femoral triangle so it descends through the femoral triangle and this initial portion as we know this is insheathed and this insheathing is known as the femoral sheath which covers this initial portion of the femoral artery and femoral vein along with obviously the medial most portion which is known as the femoral canal so this is the portion and from the very uh, from this very moment it courses beneath the sartorius to enter the adductor canal and when it passes through this adductor hiatus through this adductor hiatus now it is lying posteriorly and its name changes to popliteal artery so it initiates at this mid inguinal point where now it is in this femoral triangle and it ends at this adductor hiatus and it moves posteriorly so this is the course now the branches now it gives two set of branches few smaller branches and few deeper larger branches now the smaller branches we have already discussed these smaller branches they are towards the epigastrium which is superficial epigastric towards the flank which is superficial circumflex iliac and two pudental one is lying superficially and one is lying deep so superficial and deep external pudendal arteries they are the four smaller branches now the deeper branches or the larger branches they are this profunda femoris artery then in the adductor portion we have already uh, seen this descending genicular artery and muscular branches few muscular branches to sartorius and vastus medialis and one thing more we can obviously uh, see here this big artery lying deeper to this this is profunda femoris so clinician sometimes describes the portion above the initiation branching of this profunda femoris this portion is known as the Fem uh, common femoral artery 
this portion initial portion so this portion is known as common femoral artery while now this after branching these are divided into two set one is lying superficially and one is lying deep so now this from this very moment this portion the femoral artery they describe it as superficial femoral artery and this profunda femoris is being deeper known as the deep femoral artery so clinically that can be subdivided now next we will discuss this deeper branch which is the profunda femoris now this profunda femoris is basically the main supply to the femoral muscles this is the main supply and as you can see initially this is the portion of femoral this is cut and deeper to that we can see this is the profunda femoris so the profunda femoris it is arising laterally initially when it arises generally it arises laterally from the femoral artery one inch below the inguinal ligament but that means when the insheathing the femoral sheath it has disappeared in that very moment this branched off this profunda femoris it branched off now it spirals posterior to the femoral artery and vein to reach the medial side of the femur from this lateral portion it moves medial spirals medial so when it does so from this very moment adductor longus is throughout anteriorly in fact this upper border of the adductor longus this upper portion of the adductor longus border it separates the femoral and profunda femoris artery so it lies between these two this adductor longus here it is cut and you can see that so this portion superficial to that is this femoral artery and beneath that is the profunda femoris so it lies between these two that between the adductor longus it lies between the femoral and profunda femoris arteries so when it descends as we have already seen initially beneath this inguinal ligament there were three muscles iliopsoas the pectineus and then adductor longus so initially it lies between the pectineus and adductor longus then as it descends it lies between this adductor brevis and adductor longus between adductor brevis and adductor longus and as it descends further it lies between the adductor magnus and adductor longus so that's how it lies throughout so the artery it descends through this pectineus adductor brevis and adductor magnus and throughout this adductor longus this is lying just above it then it pierces adductor magnus and finally terminates as this terminal end is regarded as the fourth perforating artery and this fourth perforating artery it ends by anastomosing with the branches of the popliteal artery here it forms the anastomosis around the knee joint so it contributes in the anastomosis around this knee joint now the branches so branches of the profunda femoris it gives two circumflex branches which are known as lateral circumflex femoral artery and medial circumflex femoral artery and they are 
three perforating branches. In fact, the terminal in itself is the fourth perforator. So there are four perforating arteries, and it also gives muscular branches to the muscles. So next we will discuss these branches. We start with this lateral circumflex femoral artery. Here we can see how it winds around the femur, so that's why they are known as the circumflex arteries. So this is the lateral circumflex artery, and this is the medial circumflex artery. So together. They wind around the circumflex, circumflex, uh, circumference of the femur. So this lateral circumflex femoral artery it arises from the lateral side of the profunda femoris, and as it passes beneath the uh, branches of the femoral nerve, uh, these branches they are divided into arbitrarily they are divided into superficial and deep group with respect to the lateral circumflex femoral artery then as it uh, moves down it disappears from the femoral triangle beneath the sartorius as this ends here we can see it disappears from the femoral triangle beneath the sartorius to lie deep to the rectus femoris and here it breaks into its three branches one which ascends ascending branch then there is a transverse branch and there is a descending branch three set of branches ascending descending and transverse now this ascending branch it ascends and give a branch to the trochanteric anastomosis this ascending branch in fact it runs up along the intertrochanteric line and lateral to the hip joint on the vastus lateralis under the cover of the sartorius and tensor fascia lata these anastomose with the superficial and deep circumflex iliac artery and iliac branch of iliolumbar and superior branch of superior gluteal artery at this portion so at this anterior superior iliac spine at terminal end and at this portion it forms the trochanteric anastomosis which Give supply to the head and neck of the fin. Now there is a transverse branch, which forms one limb of the cruciate anastomosis. This trochanteric anastomosis and cruciate anastomosis. We will discuss that later. Then there is this descending branch. Descending branch. Now, this descending branch. This descending branch. It slopes steeply downwards. And when it does so, it lies with the nerve to the vastus lateralis. In fact, at uh, these two, this descending branch and this uh, nerve to the vastus lateralis, they uh, lie in the groove between the vastus lateralis and vastus intermedius. And then it ends by anastomosing at this. Anastomosis around this knee, or known as the patellar anastomosis. So, these are the descending branches. Then about medial circumflex femoral artery. Now, this medial circumflex femoral artery, it arises from this medial side of the profunda femoris and generally this initiation initiation point it is often above its lateral one so it generally branch off just above this lateral circumflex femoral artery 
now this uh, running above it uh, passes backwards between the pectineus and swast tendon it it winds around and so then it uh, passes backwards between the pectineus and swast then uh, running above the upper border of the adductor brevis it passes between the contiguous border of the quadratus femoris and adductor magnus what is it is moving around the circumference so this portion it winds so it uh, passes around this uh, quadratus femoris and adductor magnus to enter the back portion gluteal region and here it gives two set of branches ascending branch and horizontal branch two set of branches and this ascending branch again it follows this obturator externus and contributes in the trochanteric anastomosis we supplies this head and neck of the femur and this horizontal branch it forms the medial limb of the cruciate anastomosis so it contributes in the cruciate anastomosis now about the perforating arteries there are four set of perforating arteries in fact the uh, fourth one is the terminal portion of the profunda femoris itself it is the fourth perforating artery so these four perforating arteries they pass from anterior to posterior they pass backward through the adductor magnus near the linea aspera what happens adductor magnus has a interrupted insertion on, on the linea aspera and these interrupted portion they have this aponeurotic ending tendinous ending flattened tendinous ending so this aponeurosis it provides this conduit this gap for the perforators so through these the perforator passes posteriorly from anteriorly they passes posteriorly now the first perforating artery it passes above the adductor brevis and the fourth perforating artery it passes below the adductor brevis and second and third it passes through it and these they supply the adductor muscles and the hamstring and they move posteriorly and uh, then again when they winds around laterally they finally ends in the substance of the vastus lateralis but posteriorly they their terminal portion they divide into this ascending and descending twig terminal portion so they divide into ascending and descending branches and these ascending and descending branches they make a series of anastomosis with one another on the posterior aspect of the femur and also above with the cruciate anastomosis and below with the anastomosis around the knee joint with the popliteal artery so that's how they form this vascular portion which is in continuity on the posterior aspect of the thigh now about the perforating arteries now this per first uh, perforating artery it uh, supply the when it moves uh, from medial to posterior it supplies the adductor brevis then much posterior it supplies the adductor magnus biceps femoris and then gluteus maximus now the second perforating arteries this is the larger one and it uh, then pierces the attachment of adductor brevis and adductor magnus and divides into ascending and descending branches supplying the posterior femoral uh, muscles that means the hamstring hamstring and then it anastomoses with the first through this ascending branch and with the third 
through the descending branch. So that's how they form the series of the nastomosis on the back of the thigh. And it also gives rise to uh, this uh, nutrient artery of the femur. So nutrient artery of the femur, it arises from this second perforating artery. When they are two in number, then one of them arises from the third perforating artery also. But if there is a single solitary nutrient artery, then it arises from the second perforating artery. Now the third perforating artery, this third perforating artery, this uh, third perforating artery, it uh, starts, then this tell to the adductor brevis passes through the attachment of this and adductor magnus and divides into branches which passes posteriorly to supply the hamstring muscles. When it passes through the this uh, adductor uh, in the gap through this uh, the insertion of the adductor magnus it passes posteriorly and supplies the hamstring and this terminal portion of the profunda femoris this is known as the fourth perforating artery so that's how these are the four perforating artery which supplies the back as well as the medial portion of the thigh So we will revise that. We started with the femoral artery. At, uh, this is the continuation of the external iliac artery. It pass beneath the inguinal ligament. And just one inch below this portion, its initiation, it divides into two sets. One is superficially lying, which is the continuation known as the femoral artery. And second, which is lying lateral to the this and deeper to this. This is known as the profunda femoris. Now this profunda femoris artery then gave rise to circumflex artery which are medial and lateral, lateral circumflex and medial circumflex and they combined together wind around the circumference of the femur. And four set of perforating artery. In fact, the fourth is the terminal portion of the profunda and these three are the branches. So, four, four perforating artery, they move from anterior to posterior and they supply the femoral muscle. So, that's how they are being supplied. Also, they form two set of anastomosis. One is known as the cruciatum anastomosis and one is known as the trochanteric anastomosis. We will discuss that in the latter portion. Now we will discuss the femoral vein. The femoral vein, as we know, this is lying in this uh, adductor hiatus. So at the artery ends, this is the portion where it begins. So it begins at the adductor hiatus as the continuation of the popliteal vein. As the continuation of the popliteal vein. And it enters the apex of the femoral triangle. Initially it lies posterior to the artery. And as it proceeds upwards, finally at the base of the femoral triangle, this is lying in the medial portion and it ends posterior to the inguinal ligament and as it enters beneath it through this portion then it is known as the sternal iliac sternal iliac next is are the tributaries. So tributaries are same that follows these arteries, the branches of the arteries. So from the deeper aspect, from the deeper aspect, this is the profunda femoris or the deep femoral vein. Then we already know this is the long saphenous vein which pierces the 
this scapiform fascia and from here it goes inwards and drain into the this femoral vein and they are the two circumflex vein which are from the branches of this profunda femoris so they are lateral and medial circumflex femoral vein so these are the tributaries of the femoral vein and the femoral vein it uh, has again being a vein it contains valves and they are four to five valves and uh, the most important of them is the one which is present at the junction of the this saphenofemoral junction where the this long saphenous vein enters into this femoral vein so this is the as at the saphenofemoral junction and when obviously this is incompetent then that leads to the varicosity so this is the femoral and one thing more about this uh, portion uh, the joining of this uh, uh, long saphenous vein the long saphenous vein uh, enters the femoral vein just below the terminal portion of the incipit below the femoral sheath above this the sheath begins similar to that in case of the artery that is the uh, about that is about the femoral vein then we have already discussed this changing relationship of the femoral vein with respect to the artery or artery with respect to the vein in the initial portion at the proximal portion of the femoral triangle vein is lying medially then in the distal portion of the femoral triangle or the initial portion of the adductor canal the vein is lying posterior to the artery it is uh, slipping beneath this so lying posteriorly and in the distal portion now it is lying posterolateral as we know when it moves through the adductor hiatus now it is known as popliteal vein and the popliteal vein in the popliteal fossa that will lie lateral to the artery so that is the changing relationship of the femoral vein with respect to the femoral artery now next we will discuss the femoral nerve so femoral nerve femoral nerve is the nerve of the extensor compartment of the thigh and this is the largest branch of the lumbar plexus but uh, this is lying anteriorly but it is arising from the posterior division of l2 3 and 4 how that because we already know the lower limb it undergoes 180 degree rotation because of that this posterior division it supplies the this extensor compartment of the thigh now this portion this femoral it descends from the subnormal portion descends through the psoas major and then lying between the psoas and iliacus then it pass behind the inguinal ligament and enters the thigh and in this portion in the thigh it is split divided into anterior and posterior division by the lateral circumflex femoral artery we have already discussed that so it is divided into two groups anterior and posterior division by the lateral circumflex femoral artery and there are the branches initial when it was abdominal it gives a branch in this portion pelvic portion it gives a branch to the iliacus then as it descends as it descends it gives a branch to the pectineus 
so they are the branches from this main trunk then it divides into anterior and posterior division anterior and posterior division by this lateral circumflex femoral artery now from the anterior division it gives a medial cutaneous branch medial cutaneous branch which is the middle cutaneous branch of the thigh then it gives a branch to the sartorius and this branch to the sartorius is generally uh, two nerves and one of them usually pierces the muscle and this branch continues as the intermediate cutaneous nerve of the thigh or the intermediate femoral cutaneous nerve so these are the branches from the anterior division medial femoral uh, cutaneous nerve then nerve to sartorius which pierces and becomes cutaneous this is known as the intermediate femoral cutaneous nerve now from the posterior division now from the posterior division it gives muscular branches to all the uh, muscles of the quadriceps like uh, it gives branch to the rectus femoris and uh, these branch to the rectus femoris even uh, this is a, a double branch one of them is uh, upper branch which is generally goes to the hip joint then this this large branch into the inside the adductor canal which is known as nerve to vastus medialis nerve to vastus medialis and this large branch this is uh, the thicker branch which passes down on the lateral side of the femoral this passes on the lateral side of the femoral artery into the adductor canal and where it gives branches to and enters the vastus medialis and finally this branch it continues downwards to supply the knee joint so from this uh, vastus medialis the branch goes to the knee joint and from the rectus femoris the uh, uh, there is articular branch to the hip joint then the nerve to vastus lateralis it runs downwards with the descending branch of the lateral circumflex femoral artery to supply the muscle and the knee joint and nerve to vastus intermedius it enters the anterior surface of the muscle and this also supplies the knee joint so these are the, uh, the nerve to the quadriceps then there is one nerve which is known as the saphenous nerve so as these branches would have quadriceps they are branching this main trunk becomes slender and this becomes the cutaneous branch saphenous nerve saphenous nerve and this saphenous nerve it leaves the femoral triangle at its apex and in the subsartorial canal it passes across the front of the femoral artery it uh, uh, crosses and becomes uh, anterior to the femoral artery to reach the its medial side and gives quick to the subsartorial plexus as we know and uh, it leaves the canal at its distal end by passing between the these uh, sartorius and gracilis which forms this space and sinus at this medial portion of the tibia so this is the these are the branches so that's all about, all about the neurovascularity of the Uh, anterior compartment or neurovascularity related to the thigh.